What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. As you can see, we've got snow in the garden today, but that did not stop us from getting out into the garden today to talk about something that I am very excited to talk about. Now, that topic is winter sowing. A lot of you have asked me about winter sowing and wanted me to talk about it. And so I thought today would be a really good uh, time to do that. Now, winter sowing is not, and I'll start off by saying, is not a method that we particularly use here on the channel, but I'll get into that in a little bit. Winter sowing is an alternative to starting seeds indoors. You know, a lot of people don't have the capability to start seeds indoors. Things like lights, uh, space, or even money can all be contributing factors to why you can't start seeds indoors. And I completely understand. Se uh, starting seeds indoors can be, uh, they can be very costly. Little containers, uh, soil, um, lights, lighting can be very expensive, um, heat mats, there's a lot of different things that you might need to start seeds indoors and a lot of people just don't have that, that in the budget and that's fine. A lot of people, they don't have uh, the space. <laughs> to seed starting takes space. You might have a lot of space outside but your house might be smaller or where it's, you know, where it's, uh, where it's okay to, to start seeds, you know, maybe not in, the, in your living room or your bedroom or, in, you know, in the middle of your kitchen, not great places. So a lot of people just don't have the space to start seeds and that's fine too. Um, and then also a lot of people might not have, you know, the infrastructure. They might not have the right type of lights or strong enough lights and uh, they might not have a strong enough windowsill um, or enough space on the windowsill for that matter. And so a lot of people don't have the ability to start seeds indoors. Now, getting back to what I said is a lot of people are wondering probably why we don't use uh, this method of winter sowing ourselves, but we're talking about it. And that's because we do have the space indoors. We have our whole grow room downstairs that we can start seeds in. Uh, we have lots of space. We have beautiful, strong lights. And we're very, you know, we're very grateful to have those things. But I don't want to overlook this, alter, you know, this alternate method that a lot of people have been asking about and does work and is very reliable that can be uh, kind of an alternative method for those that don't have what we have. And I think that's really at the foundation of what MI Gardener is all about. You know, it's not, um, it's not always do as I say. You know, sometimes, sometimes it's, hey, here's what I'm doing. Here's what you can do if what I'm doing doesn't work. All right, so before I get into what I love about winter sowing, I think maybe we should talk about what is winter sowing. I guess I, I got so excited I never really talked about it, but winter sowing, like I said, is an alternative method to starting seeds indoors, but it's based off the premise that seeds will know when to sprout when the conditions are right. You see, if you leave a, a pumpkin out to rot or you, know, you throw a pumpkin in your compost pile or you know, any food scraps in your compost pile, anytime you have seeds that are dispersed outside, you might not have to bury them, pamper them, water them, fertilize them, tell them, okay, now it's getting time, you know, it's getting time to sprout. They don't care. <laughs> They'll sprout when they want to. And what I find is that often volunteers outside are often uh, quite a lot stronger, quite a lot hardier, and they do get a little bit later of a start, but they're off to the races. And uh, you know, once they're off to the races and, and they have a nice established root system, they typically do just fine. And so uh, for a lot of people, winter sowing is just a way of letting nature kind of do its own thing and really not intervening so much, which I think is great. You know, I think oftentimes us as gardeners, we have a tendency to over intervene. You know, we have a, we have a tendency to just kind of micromanage every part of the garden. And this is very much just a, a hands-off approach and saying, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you everything you need you just kind of, you take the reins and, and I'll, I'll just let you grow after that. And I like that. I, I really do. Um, you know, it's, uh, I see it all the time with volunteers in our compost pile where we'll throw a ton of, of food scraps in our, in our compost pile. I'll use the compost on our garden. And, you know, I didn't plant those there, but they, they sprout and they do great. And that is the foundation of winter sowing. Winter sowing is that, you know, we get our, our soil in, uh, in the beds. We get seeds in the soil and we typically cover them with some type of greenhouse covering or some type of protective barrier so that um, so that when they do sprout in the early spring if they don't sprout right as soon as it's perfect uh, that there is a little bit of forgiveness but um, even you know and also to protect against things like birds and and hungry uh, hungry mice and whatnot that are coming out to feed on on seeds in early spring when there's not as many uh, food stores around so 
Uh, there's quite a few reasons why we why we add a covering to that, but the greenhouse covering tends to kind of warm up the soil, get things growing, and you typically get you know one or two additional weeks of of growth out of those plants because it gives them a little bit of a jump start too. So um, I'm going to go through those through those things that you're going to need, and uh, there's quite a few different methods of winter sowing, um, and you can kind of pick which one works best for you. The first method of winter sowing is we just take just take some soil or some soil in your beds. Obviously my beds have snow on them right now. Um, it's like 25 degrees, it's super cold. Um, they'll take some soil or they'll use the soil in their beds if it's above freezing and it can be work. And they'll just put seeds right in it. And they might use something like, something like cilantro or beets or lettuce or carrots something cold hardy, something that's gonna be an early, kind of an early spring vegetable or early spring crop. And they do that because uh, you wouldn't do, the, you would not do this with things like tomatoes. You would not do this with things like peppers or eggplants. And there are people that have done it, but I think the, the idea behind this is just getting your spring crops off to an earlier start. Because you can start, you know, on your patio or you know somewhere outside you can start once it's warm enough in little containers or solo cups you can start your warm weather crops uh, and you know and, and you can get a, a much better jump start with things like that than planting things like tomatoes in your bed and so they'll start their cool weather crops uh, basically just right in the soil no protection at all they won't throw them in a in a pot bottle or you know uh, cover them with something like this they'll just throw them right in the soil. And that's fine, but you're gonna have some losses. You, you'll definitely have more losses than if you added some level of protection. So that's the first method. The second method is with a pot bottle. Now, a lot of people have seen this method where you take your, your pot bottle or you know milk jug, something like that, drill holes in the bottom, obviously, because you need some drainage. They, <laughs> they fill it. They fill it with soil. They water it down, they plant their seeds. And then what you do is you tape on, you take some tape and you tape the lid back on to make a little greenhouse. And then what you wanna do is you want to, uh, in the springtime, you wanna open off the lid so that it gets uh, any, any humidity has a tendency to move out and you don't have things like mold. So it gives a good little bit of ventilation there. And then some people will even poke holes in the side for added ventilation. Um, so that's the pot bottle method. And I would say this is probably my least favorite method of them all. I, I really don't like this method because it requires you to have pot bottles and milk jugs. And I always tend to say that if you can make gardening look tidy, if you can make gardening look aesthetically pleasing, um, it, it does not leave a, a sour taste in people's mouths that don't know what, what's going on. You know, if I just had a bunch of pot bottles out in my yard, my neighbors, people driving by would look at that and they'd say, Eh, I could see why gardening should be banned in the city. You know, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. But if you're doing things that look distasteful, like, you know, just trash lying around, it can, depending on the person and, and their mindset, it can tend to, to leave a bad taste in their mouth. So, um, you know, I'm not a huge proponent of this. It does work and people do, you know, I, there's a lot of people that do this. So I'm not, I'm not knocking it other than the fact that there's another method that's better that I personally prefer that I have used in the past and works great. And that's by simply going to the dollar store and getting, you know, spending a tiny bit of money, tiny bit. This is usually, you know, this is free. You can find pop bottles and milk jugs just about anywhere, but this is the free method or, or this is the nearly free method, I should say. And that is by going to the dollar store and just getting these clear organizational bins. I love these, I love these. And I'll get into why I love these. So in these, I guess I didn't elaborate, once the plants germinate in here, you're gonna leave these outside. You're gonna water them in, you're gonna put the seeds in, you're gonna cover them up, you're gonna leave them right outside, right outside all winter long. Like you could do it right now. <laughs> I know you're probably asking, Luke, when can I do winter sowing? I really like how this sounds. You can do this right now, in the middle of winter. Doesn't matter if you're zone three, zone four, zone five, doesn't matter. And basically you water it, you uh, put your, your, your pots, your containers outside, and it's fantastic. I mean, it just really works. But the downside is when, these, when the plants germinate, 
what you have to do is you actually have to scoop out the plants. You have to cut, you know, cut the sides of the container or scoop them out. And, and then basically you take your, your seed starts and you plant them in, in, the, in the raised bed where you're gonna put them or, or in the ground. And so um, what that can lead to is some root damage and you can lead to some plant losses that way from just stressing them out by moving them and, and really messing them up. So that's what happens with these. And again, people do have success with them. People absolutely have success do using that method, but here's what I love. <laughs> I love this, this right here. This is the best alternative because what you're going to do is you're going to use the native soil or your raised bed as kind of the, the pot here. And you're simply going to do the following. You're gonna take, you're gonna take your soil and you're going to, right on top of the snow, it doesn't matter. The reason why we're doing this is because I don't have thawed soil. If, you're, if your soil was thawed, you wouldn't even have to use that. So right on top of the soil, and you're gonna dampen it down like so. And then here's where the magic comes in, you guys. You take your seeds and you're simply going to make sure you don't dump all your seeds <laughs> like I almost did. You're gonna take your seeds and like this is carrots here, we're gonna plant our carrots out with the proper spacing. I might have to come in back and thin a little bit, but I shouldn't have to thin too awful much. There we go. There we go, just like that. Give them another, another dampening down, like that. And then you can cover with a little bit more soil if you want, you can cover with a tiny bit more soil. Dampen them down a little bit more if you want. And here's the kicker, you guys. There's no stress to these plants. When they wanna grow, they can grow. Take your container, fit it on top like that, push it down, and then you're simply gonna weigh this down with like a brick. You wanna weigh this down with a brick so it doesn't blow away, but underneath here, you've got your beautiful greenhouse. Your plants are gonna grow up here. You could, you could get a bunch of these you know, I might get I might get like 15 or 30 of these. I can reuse them from year to year, as long as they don't crack or break or anything like that. They're they're great, and just weigh them down with like a brick or a heavy stone, something like that. Um, or if you have a bunch of them, just lay like a heavy board over top of all of them, and uh, that way they're not going to blow around. And this way, in the springtime, all I have to do is just lift them up. You guys, all I have to do is just lift them up. I don't have to do any cutting of the pots. It really doesn't look that bad because again, this is. This looks a lot better than this. I mean, you just cannot disguise. This, you know, this looks like plastic, but it doesn't look like a pop bottle or a milk jug, and it doesn't look like trash. This looks like it has a purpose. So there you go. There's winter sowing in a nutshell. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And even if you do start your seeds indoors, what I hope you got from this is that there are options. Having options is a great thing. You know, even though you might not use this method, you can tell a friend about it. And I think that's great because one of the things that I've seen so often is that people get discouraged thinking that there's only one method for success. And when in reality, there's so many other methods out there. And that's, like I said, at the core of MI Gardener, what I wanna do is just give you guys options so that if something is not working for you, you have a fallback option. The more options you have, the more confidence you have to, uh, to go out and conquer the garden. So I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you learned something new. If you are interested in getting some seeds, quick plug here, quick shameless plug to migardener.com seeds. We sell uh, well over 600 different varieties of heirloom, organic, and non-GMO vegetable seeds for $2 a pack. We also do free shipping on $12, on orders of $12 or more in the US and Canada. So it's an offer that is absolutely amazing and one that we're super, super proud of. Tons of seed, great quality seed at that. So if you need some seed, make sure to check it out. Also, there's, uh, there is some stuff out of stock, but we are gonna be restocking and continually restocking as the season goes. So uh, if there's something that's out of stock, just join the wait list. And finally, um, one last little plug is for my book. So a lot of people have asked in recent weeks for a good gardening resource. They're new to gardening, they're just getting into gardening, or someone they know is just getting into gardening, and they need a good gardening resource. Um, I wrote a book about three years ago called The Autopilot Garden. And 
And this book is all about just how to garden easier and smarter and having your garden work for you rather than you work for it so that you can maintain a beautiful garden of this size for about 10 minutes a week. It's pretty incredible and it's absolutely game changing. So I would recommend checking out that book if you're interested. I will have links to everything in the description box below. But as always, this is Luke from the Am I Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.